Greetings, this is Father Michael with our Word of the Week. This week's word is Rejoice, Gaudete! We're here on the road, a little priory days away, and I'm standing in front of one of the symbols of the season, the Christmas tree, as we prepare now and turn towards that anticipation of Christmas itself, that is the historical and liturgical moment of Christ coming to birth, we look at three ways in which we rejoice. First, there's a way we rejoice in the anticipation of something. Notice the Christmas tree, often under the Christmas tree is Anyone, both those young and young of heart know, is the anticipation amongst this glittering, ornamented, radiant uh, tree will be presents, gifts. And there's a kind of joy, a kind of rejoicing in simply the anticipation of the good which is to be received. In my own life, I know a number of uh, couples who are pregnant. They are excited that new life is going to be born into this world, my own family included. And so the preparation, that sense of attention and rejoicing, even in the anticipation, what does it do? It expands our hearts to receive the Lord when he comes. As you do your Christmas shopping, as you traffic in all the ways you're preparing, think about this. What are you anticipating? How indeed do you expect the Lord to be born anew in your life? If you don't anticipate it, you won't rejoice because you won't receive it. Let this time be indeed a time, first of all, of rejoicing and the anticipation of the coming of Christ anew in your life. Continuing our theme of rejoicing, Gaudete, in this Advent season as we anticipate Christ, we turn now to the second aspect of rejoicing, and that is possession of the good itself. We first had that sense of anticipation, asking ourselves, what are we hoping for? What are we expecting? How can we rejoice in even the anticipation? But then there's the possession of the good thing itself. Here we are once again on the road, tails from the road, and I'm overlooking a construction zone, and <laughs> there's a sense in which that way washed out many years ago is still a work in progress. And we might say to ourselves, our lives are a work in progress. How could I possibly rejoice amidst the burdens, the cares, the challenges, the loss of this last year? I don't have much to rejoice in. And yet, possessing Christ in our lives and our hearts, you know what? That doesn't, in a sense, mitigate our sufferings and sorrows, but it gives us the ability to continue the journey amidst the sorrows and the suffering, the challenges and the losses. In other words, if this doesn't seem like a rejoicing time for you at Christmas, I would say fire up the chainsaw and get to work (laughs) because Christ is with us in our struggles. In the fashioning and building of our life, he wants to be present to us. Open your heart wide and see those challenges not as impediments to Christ's presence, but the way in which he will pave the way, surely to the heart of his Father. May possession of the good, that is our Lord Jesus, even in the midst of struggles and a little work in progress, be indeed our joy. May we rejoice in his possession even in the midst of loss. Once again, we continue our Gaudaute rejoicing and the third aspect of how we rejoice. We've heard how we need to rejoice in the anticipation of the coming of Christ, that we need to rejoice in the present possession. Even when there's challenges and struggles, we come to the third aspect of rejoicing, and that is the sharing of what we've received. I'm here in this beautiful context in wine country and wherever you see wine country you not only see the beautiful vines you see those places of production of wine but you've got places to do what to store of the beautiful wine here and so we're here in this very historic wine what do you call these things i guess the wine storage unit (laughs) but you have that sense that as the grapes come in as they mature as it's turned into wine, that wine needs to be shared. Here, perhaps the most spiritual spout (laughs) that that we find come gushing wine. I think of all the wine that has flowed uh, through this spout. And that idea then that wine is meant to be savored, but also to be shared. So too with us. 
as we anticipate the coming of Christ, as we continue to recognize his presence, even amongst the struggles, we must not neglect the kind of rejoicing which comes with precisely sharing the good news. Ask yourself this, as you prepare for Christmas, in these few precious days before the coming of Christ, turn your mind towards the sharing of how God has blessed you. How has this 2023 been a year of blessings? And this doesn't take away from perhaps the struggles, but look inward to see how the Lord has produced of the great vintage of his presence and then share it. Let someone know a joy shared is a joy doubled. That's what it means to rejoice. To joy and joy is to rejoice. That only happens through sharing. May these days before the coming of the Lord be days of rejoicing, days of sharing the beautiful, rich vintage of God's grace in our lives. Let us rejoice. Gaudete. Amen. 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 If you're enjoying these videos, do like, comment, subscribe. Also go to our website. May the Lord indeed radiate in your life and may we radiate the joy of the gospel here in the heart of the city.